we're going to jump right into what we are going to be using. And I want to start off by saying this recipe that I'm using for this apple pie filling, I first saw it on the Needy Homesteader. And I also went out and I got, well, not went out. I ordered online this book right here. This is a great book. And here is my apple pie filling um, recipe right here. And I marked over on the side how I'm going to adjust it because I'm going off of how the Needy Homesteader did hers because I want to have more filling because I'm actually doing uh, two different types of apples, but the same kind of apple. What I'm gonna be doing is we're gonna be using a water bath canner. Um, the book calls for five and a half cups of sugar. I'm using six. It also calls for one and a half cup of clear gel or cornstarch. I will not be using cornstarch. And please, you don't have to leave me any comments about, oh, you shouldn't use um, clear gel because it's just the cornstarch and you shouldn't be using it. And um, it's not recommended in canning. They have created a modified version of the um, cornstarch that is this clear gel powder right here. Okay. It's specifically for canning now. They've modified it. If you don't feel comfortable with doing it, then don't do it. Leave that part out. So again, how I'm doing it is not how you have to do it. You can do it your own way. I'm just showing you what I'm doing and um, what I feel comfortable with doing. Okay, I've used clear gel before. It came out just fine in my chicken pot pie, and I'm going to continue to use it. Um, however, if you choose not to, then don't do it. Just don't do it. Okay, so y'all, let's get into. I video. love this pillow core slicer from my kitchen aid, but y'all, it was taking too much of the apple for me, so I couldn't use it. I ended up going with the hand pillar because I also tried the hand crank apple pillar that I have, and it literally took all the apple away. So my apples are cut. I have these cut and I have another one cut right here that I'm gonna be doing the apple pie in a jar one with. So you wanna blanch them for one minute. After you blanch them for the minute, put them in a container and put a pot or something over it to hold the heat in while you get your filling together. And here I have jars warming up. So I just blanched these. I have them covered up with a ceramic plate to keep the heat in. Now, if you have somebody that can help you um, do this they could be blanching while you're doing the actual mixture but this is a way to keep your apples nice and hot okay so as you can see I have my lids right here already hot I have my debubbler not deep well you can use it as a debubbler at the bottom end this is my magnet I have my debubbler right here and I'm using a funnel. I need to get me a wide mouth funnel, but we're gonna make that work. And I also have a whisk. You have your jar lifter right here, ladle, and then I have my measuring spoon and all of my season, well, all of my spices right here. So I have my six and a half cups of sugar, two cups of cornstarch, one tablespoon of cinnamon, one teaspoon of nutmeg, pumpkin pie spice. This is optional, but I'm going to use it, but I'm only going to use a half, a heaping half of a teaspoon. Now I'm gonna whisk this together So you guys, I've moved over to the stove because now we're going to add 
So I measured it out earlier. Eight you and see where that three. line is right here? That's how much um, apple juice I'm going to put in here. turn the fire on so guys stir the liquid continuously not letting it stick or scorch bring it to a boil not rolling boil then add your lemon juice to the pot once you do that let it cook for one full minute so your filling is actually starting to thicken up those spots that are in there it's just showing you that the clear gel is making the liquid thick I want to say it took around 10 to 15 minutes to even get it to this point. So don't think that you have too much liquid in your pot. Just keep stirring. Now if you take a look, we are good and thick. And as soon as we start to bubble just a little bit, I'm gonna pour the one cup of lemon juice in and then I'm going to let it cook for one full minute and then we'll be ready to put our apples in. And remember, I'm splitting this up between my two different apples that I'm doing. We are at that bubble stage. We're gonna put our lemon juice in. What a sound. Sound like my stomach the other night. So we're gonna cook this in for one full minute. So remember, I'm doing two different ways with my apple pie in a jar. I dice these apples up. So I'm placing them into the jar and then I'm adding the filling to the jar, debubbling, packing down, adding more apples, then adding more filling in that process. And then it'll be a totally different process with the whole slice apples. Now, adding vanilla is not necessary. I just like vanilla. The vanilla I like to use is this one right here. It is a Mexican vanilla blend. Smells really, really good. I'm going to be going with a little less, well, a little more than one. I'll show you. And that's because when you're cooking with the, the filling, it will... Um, rise up and this worked for me when i did my chicken pot pie filling i'm not adding any more apples just some of this nice thick and this stuff is messy And you definitely want to have hot jars when doing this. Okay, so here's what I'm talking about. The spoon on hand, I'm going to press these down. I'm going to debubble. Well, I was debubbling the whole time, so everything should be compacted. Press this down because we try not to have it flow out from under our ligand. So this is your this is your one inch head space right here. Notice 
where mine is. I'm not going over the ridge right here. That should allow for expansion of everything in here to rise up and not spill out. So once you get your jar like that, so have you a bowl that you can go in and wipe around your edges with. Because this stuff is sticky. My hands are sticky. Look at that. Sticking. You want to make sure you get this wiped off with your vinegar in your paper towel around your edges and around the top don't worry about this part of the jar just worry about getting a great seal on your product then you want to add your ring and you want well you want to add your lid you want to add your lid and you want to add your ring fingertip tight and then place this into your canner and complete the rest of them but these right here with the small ones these will be for my apple pie in a jar so i'm speeding this up for you guys for time's sake but take your time when you're doing it don't rush this process So here are my whole pieces of apple slices that I'm going to mix in. It's hard to do this, y'all, and record. I need a camera person. This is why I did extra of the ingredients so that I would have extra sauce for all these apples. So I had to make sure I was covering these apples completely before jarring. So this part is optional. I felt like I needed more cinnamon, so I added a little bit extra cinnamon, maybe two uh, tablespoons worth of cinnamon to my apples and mixed them up before jarring. Again, take your time when jarring your apples. One, they are hot. Two, you're in no rush. You want to get it right. So once you get the apples in and you're debubbling the whole way, pack it down with a spoon. And if you need to take any extra out, go ahead and do that. But don't go over or close to that one inch head space and then wipe the rim and ridges of your jars. Place your lids on, put your rings on fingertip tight and add it to I'm your canner. done. Not quite. Still have some apples to go. But I had to stop recording because, you guys, my um, camera battery was dying. So, you want to fill it at least halfway. Debubble. Then put the rest in 
Okay, so let me show you up close. This is your one inch head space. You want to have yours right here at the ridge of the jar. That's where you want to make your head space at. Let's see where we are. And that is where we are. I've already debubbled and then I mash it down with the spoon. This tip, of course, came from the Needy Homesteader, you guys. Then you want to take your vinegar and you can change out your uh, paper towel. I do all the time. Um, wipe around really well so you can get the seal that you need. And don't rush because let me tell you, this stuff is messy, it's sticky. Now we're gonna put our lid on. And our ring, fingertip tight, and place it into the canner. Now you can see where the head space is that I'm using right here is way off from the one inch. But when these cook, you'll see you needed that space because it is going to rise. So I have both canners going right now. They're both up on high. We're going to bring these to a rolling boil. Once they get to a rolling boil, then I will set my timer. And for my altitude, I will be canning for 30 minutes okay under a thousand you would be canning for 25 minutes so you're not waiting a long time to bring it up to boil put your lid on top of your canning pots once it comes to a boil if you want to take it off you can although i'm using my pressure canner i'm not pressure canning my lid is not as you can see it is not completely on. It's just on there to keep the heat in and bring it up to a rolling boil. I also added vinegar to the water. So our 30 minutes is up. I did put the lids back on so that they would stay at a rolling boil. I'm just gonna turn the fire off and of course the timer. And we're gonna let these sit for at least five to 10 minutes. You don't wanna just take them out now because you don't wanna risk anything happening to your jars so looking in i'm not seeing any siphoning that's a good sign so far you guys so we'll be back this process overwhelmed me before i even started i talked myself out of it many times but you guys you just got to get in there and do it and i feel really empowered getting this apple pie in a jar together. I have eight of the whole sliced apples in three jars of the um, the dice ones. Look at the head space. See how it rose up? So yeah, stick with the ridge and you'll be fine. So you guys, look here what I have. Don't they look good? I had no siphoning in my pot. Sorry, I had to do a voiceover, but it was too much noise in here. I was just saying, don't talk yourself out of doing things. That is what we do all the time, especially women. Just get in there, roll your sleeves up and get it done. You can do this too. This was my first time and it was a success. Every time it's not going to be a success. Just do it. As you can see, there's no siphoning in my canner pots, either of them. No leakage at all.